We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Slipcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm doing all right. How are you doing today, Jared? Uh, uh tired, but we we already kind of talked about that in uh, the Monday episode. So let's just let's just keep moving. Uh, we are doing an ask ask Sloopcast mailbag today. Um, is we I, I asked everyone to give us some questions based on uh, sort of like some early predictions. Like we're we're past spring camp now. Like throw us some questions doing some early predictions for the season and we'll see how much they stuck to that and how much they didn't. Is that a plan? We'll check the mailbag and we'll see if they actually stuck to my directions or not. And we'll, we'll, we'll probably at least try to answer them regardless. Yep. All right, here we go. Uh, again, some of, some of this was before the draft, some of it after here. So we're going to get kind of get a mixed here. So we'll start with Odin's wrath. Okay. How the hell? How the hell was Hutchinson projected as a number one pick? Uh, because people are desperate to find the next Bosa. Yeah, <laughs> he's a he's a big freaking white guy who wears ninety seven, and it's just like, oh, look a new Bosa. And is he's? And I, don't get me wrong. I think Hutchinson's very good. I think he's very good. I'm not. I'm not trying to do the well. He's bad actually, but he, he's he's not he's no Bosa. He's not a Bosa. He, yeah. He's not. He's not a Joey Bosa. He's not even a Nick Bosa. Uh, he's no Bosa. Uh, he's very mm-hmm. good. I'm not trying to say he isn't, uh, but he's he's not. There are better defensive ends in the draft. I'll say that much. Um, yeah. And he's good. I just don't. I don't. I don't think he was top two good. I don't think he was top ten good. I think he was first round good. Absolutely first round good. Um, but, and for, for the young guys listening to this, you, I don't know if you know who I'm about to talk about, but like, it's a, it's, it's just the Tim Bianca Patuka thing where Tim Bianca Patuka was just like a, a, he was a guy, he was a guy. He was, he was pretty good. And I'm not trying to say that he wasn't good, but he was just a guy. He's a very, he's pretty good. Uh, has an amazing game against Ohio state and gets launched into the NFL draft stratosphere because of it. All right, I, I think I think that's enough talking about him. Let's let's move on to another one. <laughs> he's it's just it's uh, he's just the new Tim Bianca Patuka. Yeah, I I, th- I think that perfectly sums it up there. Uh, Odin also asks: Has there ever been a draft where only one quarterback has qu- quarterback taken in the first two rounds? Uh, I don't have the numbers on that. That's a technical question. That's a stat based question. I don't have. Uh, uh, the absolute answer on, but I'd be shocked if it's happened even quasi recently. We're talking like the modern draft. We're talking like the seventh, the seven round era of the draft. I highly doubt it. I highly, highly, highly doubt it. This was one of the weakest quarterback classes we have ever seen. Um, I honestly can't think of the last time a quarterback class has been this week. And I've been a draft nerd for a very, very, very long time. Um, this was incredibly weak, incredibly, incredibly weak. Um, I think Pittsburgh made the right call. Uh, I think that they sat exactly where they were. They didn't trade up. And I got your answer here. Okay. I was, I, I was, I was here. vamping. I was vamping for you. Cause I saw you looking up the answer. <laughs> so I was vamping for you. Uh, Pittsburgh made the right call. Uh, I think they picked the best quarterback in the draft, and I think that they did it by just sitting exactly where they were and picking, you know, who they felt was the best guy. And I agree. I I think he's a very good quarterback. I don't think he's a top 10 quarterback. Um, I think there's risk involved there. And I think Pittsburgh probably would have been fine if it had been... uh, If it had been like, uh, you know, Ritter instead. Hey, Kyle, Zoom is telling me this meeting's going to end in 10 minutes unless we upgrade. When the hell did they start doing this? I have no idea. We'll 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 figure that out. We're done with Zoom. We're, next... we're going to move to something else. I'm I'm not going to deal with that <laughs> shit and I'm not going to pay Zoom so uh, they can go to hell. 
So, so, so uh, the, the, Kyle, in about 10 the, minutes, we're, the call's going to drop and we're going to have to fix it. So that's a warning to everybody. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Um, it says here that this, this is the third time in the past 30 years that only one quarterback drafted in the first two rounds. That was 1996 and 2000. 1996 and 2000. Um, hell. 2096. I wonder who the quarterbacks were from those classes. Do you have that readily available? No. Wasn't OO Brady? Uh, uh, let's see here. I, I'm, I'm going. I'm going down real quick here, looking in the first round for the. So in '96, the first quarterback was in the second round. St. Louis Rams took Tony Banks from Michigan State. <sighs> Ouch. And then in 2000, it was Chad Pennington. First round, mid, middle of the first round to the Jets. I remember that draft. Um, and Chad and Pennington the was a serviceable guy. Uh, and yes, and the second, uh, the second, Gangland the OO was Brady. Yeah. The second quarterback was the 49ers in the third round took Giovanni Kamazi. Don't don't look at me like I'm going to help you with that pronunciation or remembering who the hell that is. It was he played on a one double A school, Hoff, Hofstra. Oh, ho so your oh second, Hofstra. Your, okay. Your 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 second your second <laughs> quarterback is from one double A. Uh, I feel like that's well. I mean. That, that's happened recently, too. It's just that uh, it was a Delaware quarterback, and he was pretty good, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, uh, Big Ben was not 1AA. Ben, Big Ben was Mac. Nope. He played for yeah, he was, Miami. He Mac. Maction. Yeah, interesting. Interesting little fact there. All right. Um, get back to the questions here. Uh, has Ohio State now officially been deemed wide receiver U? Uh, they, if they, if they haven't been, they will be, they should it will be, be now, very yes. soon. Uh, they ain't done yet. You're going to have no. at least one wide receiver drafted in the first round next year. We'll see if, I, I don't know, it'd be hard for Julian Fleming to go from, you know, underutilized to first round in one year. Um, and, but and I think I that think that talent is there Yeah, and he there's has a hell a of a quarterback of throwing to him. So that'll help. There's a lot of good quarterbacks in next year's draft, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there are. Um, yeah, right. you can think uh, of one in particular. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sure you can. Well, there, there's there's two. There's two you can think of right offhand. I, um, I, one for sure. One for one sure. One for sure. One, one for sure. All right. Uh, all right. Gangland has a bunch of questions, has a bunch of uh, early projections here, early okay. projections for us to answer some over unders. Uh, first one here, Gangland wants to know over under defensive and sacks, just defensive and sacks. And he has the over under at 14 and a half. Over. I'm going to go over just based off of the pure talent and the scheme that Ohio State will have next year. Yeah, it's it's I I, I think I, I think the top three defensive ends alone are gonna get that. And the top three defensive ends, specifically in the sack category, will be you know, Sawyer, uh no, no particular order, Sawyer, JTT, and of course Zach Harrison. Um and I think that they're gonna have a all three of them are going to have amazing seasons and we'll yep. have over 15 sacks before we even talk about. Yeah. Yeah. So then the, the next one is total defensive tackle sacks at 11 and a half. I'm going to, I'm going to say under for that one. Yeah. Haskell was like the, the so, but here's the thing though, Kyle, you have these defensive ends crashing on the outside might cause a lot of quarterbacks to step up right into the defensive tackles. Um, 
we saw a lot of sack production from the DTs. Now Haskell Garrett's gone, and a lot of that came from him. Um, there, there should be a lot more Tyleek on the field this year, and he was getting sack numbers as well. Um, it feels like a lot. I'm going to say under, but I think that's a good number. All right. Uh, next one, linebacker sex, nine and a half. Uh, we will mm. have more of a blitz heavy defense this year. That is for sure. Um, I wonder how much of the blitzing will be done in pass blitzing because there's pass blitzing and then there's run blitzing and Knowles definitely likes to run well, blitz and he does, he does pass blitz, well, well, but I think here, he also here's... never had defensive ends and defensive tackles at Oklahoma state or Duke that he has at Ohio well, state. Well, um, here's, here's the next, here's the next question too. Do you consider the, the bullet or the, whatever they're going to call it as a linebacker position? See, so and that that's the other thing, because then you also have like the whole Jack slash Leo position that's part linebacker, part defensive end. Where does that count? And like, I'm going to say defensive end, because I just like whatever we determine the player is. Um... Yeah, I don't know. It, it, the positions are becoming more and more fluid. Uh that's it's just not as simple as defensive end. This mm -hmm. guy's a defensive end. This guy's a lot. It's just a stand up end. I get that. Listen, I've believe me, gangland. I have been pushing the narrative that, you know, people are freaking out about the bandit and the adjuster and the, this and the, the Jack and the, this and the, that like y'all, y'all got to chill. Like it's yeah. a free safety. It's a strong safety. It's a nickel back. Who's uh, also kind of a safety. So he's like a, he's like, a, he's a cover safety. Uh, it's, it's not. Yeah. It's just his way to describe it. Noel's personal brand of defense. Yeah. It's just like, there are hybrid positions. Ohio state used a Viper a very long time ago, which was a hybrid linebacker defensive end. It's not, it's not wild. It's not new. It's not anything we haven't seen before. It's, it's, it's fine. Like it's, we, mm -hmm. we really don't need a uh, Jabril. Uh, uh, he, well, I, I don't remember what Michigan called it, but that, that was essentially like their bullet. That was the linebacker safety hybrid. I don't remember what the hell they called it. All right. Some more over unders here, Jared. Interceptions as a team, seven and a half. I'm going to over, 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 over. Three safeties on the field. Um, you're going to have two experienced corners on the field at all times. There's enough experience on the field now that you should have at least uh, two experienced corners on the field at all times. Um, I, I think you see a defense who's playing their zones much better. Um, they're not just sort of standing in the middle of the field. They actually seem to be flowing and adjusting in their zones, at least what, from what little we saw from the spring game. Um, if they can force more pass rush, that will force bad decisions. I it's just, it's, it's gotta, it's gotta be more than seven. It's gotta be more than seven. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, special team touchdowns at point five. I'll go with over because special team touchdowns in also include the uh, hunt blocks too. So I'll go with over. I'm going to go over because you just need one to win it, right? Yes. <laughs> you just need the one to get it. Even though we haven't seen, we haven't seen one in forever, right? Uh, I feel no, we, we've seen a, we've seen a couple of punt block touchdowns. Oh yeah. Punt block touchdowns specifically we have, but, as far as up and there it went. <laughs> oh, Kyle, we're almost done with Zoom. He can't hear me. It's fine. We're we're gonna have to move to Discord or something. It's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. 
we aren't worried about this. This isn't a thing that we're surprised by. <laughs> this isn't this isn't uh, <coughs> a bunch of shit that Zoom just sprung on us in the, in the last second that we had no idea was happening. Nothing, nothing's wrong and everything's fine. We adjust right. and we overcome. Right, we adjust and we overcome. That's that's the last one for 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 this recording session here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Might be our last Zoom recording session. Maybe. Uh, yeah, you only need you only as Jared said, you only need one. This so, episode yeah, I'll, of the Sloopcast not there. brought to you by Zoom. Zoom can go fuck itself. Fuck you, Zoom. <laughs> All right, last question from Gangline here. Most touchdowns thrown by a backup in a game? Well, let's just, okay, first and foremost, it's going to be McCord. Yep. It's going to be McCord. Mm-hmm. Um, <coughs> that the, the quarterbacks are one, two, three right now. There, there's no, there's no anything there's there. No, the quarterbacks no are debate. one, two, three. That's, that's, that, that is what it is. Um, most, so, you look at the schedule, like you're probably looking at a September game. Maybe Stroud goes out early because they're up so much. You got a lot, a lot of young wide receivers on the team, maybe looking to get some work. Um, three? I, I'd be, I'd, I'd be hard pressed to see it go above three. Two is also an acceptable answer. Uh, but I'm gonna go with three. Gotcha. Um, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll go. I'll go with three. I, I kind of like that number three. Uh, let's see. I got Esquire with a few questions as well. Game with the largest margin of victory. Oh, look, looking at the uh, schedule here, Jared. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I'm gonna have to go with the. Uh, the game on November twenty sixth, where Ohio State will win one hundred to nothing. <laughs> is that is that is that the correct answer? I think so. I think that might be the correct answer. Um, so I mean, realistically, you look at the schedule. Arkansas State and Toledo feel like the obvious answers, right? They're the they're the two cupcakes on the schedule. Um whatever like vegas those will be the biggest numbers per vegas all year um either one of those games feels like the right answer uh i don't know it's maybe not because maybe the defense is still working on shit and maybe they get some cheap scores maybe it's one of those games where Ohio state actually goes into it revving at a hundred percent. Cause like there, there's always a little bit of a letdown you going, you know, Arkansas state versus Toledo. Maybe you, you just come off a of Notre Dame and maybe you're kind of sleepwalking in. You don't put up everything you could do against Arkansas state. I don't know. Maybe it comes again. Like I said, in a game where like you're amped up and you're ready, like Iowa, Last time you were on the field with Iowa, they embarrassed you. They ruined their season. Now you're on the field with Iowa again, and you're juiced. You're up for it. There's blood in the water. You're not taking Iowa lightly ever again. And you just go ham on them. And then, of course, as Kyle said, there's Michigan. Just like... (laughs) Um, Iowa had no also... offense when they destroyed Ohio State too. <laughs> yeah. and, and, you, and you look at like Northwestern. Northwestern is not going to be good this year too. Maybe when Ohio State has everything put together, they're rolling into um, uh, November, and they're they got everything just like clockwork. Maybe maybe that one against Northwestern, or maybe Indiana. Maybe Indiana too. I could honestly see Northwestern being a bit of a score doesn't look good at halftime sort of game. If I'm being honest with you, uh, okay. coming okay. right off of the game with like you go Michigan State, who's going to be pretty good. Iowa juiced for all the reasons I just said. Penn State, you, you have to be amped up for Penn State no matter what. And then Northwestern, I think there's a little bit of a potential for like a. <sighs> okay, it's just Northwestern. We can kind of 
All right. And then, then you kind of yeah. have a shitty first half. And then eventually, like you, you, you make up for it in the third quarter and, and blow them yeah. out. But mm-hmm. I, I could see the Northwestern game going like that personally. Right. Uh, all right. In a game with the smallest margin of victory or, or a game we lose. Uh, it's, it's hard not to pick the, fir- your first game, Notre Dame. You, you got it. You got to You got to You got a top five matchup. Ohio State and Notre Dame. I, it's, I, I think that's probably your closest one. Um, I think Notre Dame has a lot going for it on the defensive side of the ball. Their offense, yeah. however, does not scare me. Um, I think Knowles will have the defense going at that point. Um, and as good as Notre Dame's defense has the potential to be, they're not. They're not ready. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well. they're 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 not ready. Hey, Austin, they're not ready for 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 Stroud and and the wide receiving core and Henderson. It's good to see you too, Austin. Uh, they're they're not ready. They're 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 not ready. Ohio State's going to slaughter Notre mm-hmm. Dame. the The game okay. that I am most worried about looking at the schedule would be Penn State. Um, it's probably going to be a night game. It's it's it, it not it has not been announced it, yet, but it put money be. on it. It's going to be a night game. <clears throat> it's late ish in the season. It's on the back half of the season, and yes, it's it's in Happy Valley. Yep, correct. It, right. It's not uh, it's not in stone, Austin. That's the point that it's not in stone. It's still TBD, it but it be. might as well be. Um, teams leading tackler for this season. Team leading tackler for the season. Mm. So Gangland for uh, says Rocket, and I get that. I get what you're saying, but see, Austin says Steel, and I almost, man, I almost want to lean more towards Ooh. Steel. Um, yeah. The thing yeah. is about Hickman is that, listen, if Hickman. If if Hickman were still playing the bullet bandit, the the run stopping mm-hmm. yeah. safety, whatever the fuck we're calling it, um, then I would I would say it's it's Hickman. But they are allegedly, supposedly, moving him back to the deep safety, the free safety, the adjuster, blah, 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 blah. Um, and you just not get as you're not going to get as many tackles back there. So Proctor would be putting his nose into the box. Um, potentially. Well, you're, th- um, well, you're leading, ta- you're leading tackler last year, Jared. Was was Hickman. Was Hickman by a lot. By a lot. By 30, and, by and that's what I'm saying. Like four tackles. I 100% get gangland. Gangland just immediately says Hickman. And I, I get that for good reason. I get that. But I just don't think that the defense the position he's playing in this new defense is going to be, I don't, I don't think this position is built to get a lot of tackles. I think you have to think of this as like Jordan Fuller. I think is is how you have to think of this position. Um, Yeah. So who's going to get the most tackles? Man, I, I, I kind of want to say steel chambers. I think that's kind of where I'm leaning right now. Yeah. All right. Uh, next question. Well, no, here. Austin, here's the thing. I agreed with you, which means that you're probably wrong. <laughs> All right, who, who, who you're on my this? side, Austin. Does that mean you're right? Probably not. Who recovers the most turnovers, fumble recoveries or interceptions? Sorry, say that again. Who recovers the most turnovers? Recovers the most turnovers. Um, see, I think here, I think here I think we he... can talk about Hickman. Uh, sort of playing that deep, that that deep safety. Um, that, that, that's my thought. That was my thought, Austin, um, with Cam Brown. I don't know. Um, 
Because, yeah, no, I, I get it. He's going to have the ball thrown his way a lot. Yes. Um, it, I, I, I think that, I think if the question was leading interceptions, I might go Cam Brown. Um, but I think Hickman could also be in the conversation specifically for interceptions. And then on top of that, how many fumbles will we really force though? Well, but the defensive line will get a lot of those. Not necessarily. It depends upon who's fumbling it. Um, the, mm -hmm. the safety is going to be the guy who's like furthest from the ball. And therefore, if the ball goes loose, he's going to be the one that, you know, is potentially the one who's going to be able to see it go loose. Isn't going to be uh, caught up in the mess of people. I mean, hooker Do you, you know what i mean can i just say hooker uh do, do, do you remember how he basically saved that entire defense that year by getting a bunch of turnovers from that deep safety position hooker was the exception not the rule yeah hmm. all right um let's maybe see. will this will this team have a double digit sack getter Double-digit sack getter. Last last year, last year Ohio State only had thirty-six sacks, and your leading sack was Haskell Garrett with five and a half. Yeah, uh, there uh, the, the, a lot of scheme issues there. Let's just yes. leave it at that yes. for right now. Um, yes, although I'm not going to say who. Um, Sawyer, JTT, Harrison. One of them. I kind of yeah. want to say it's going to be JTT because I think you'll have Sawyer and Harrison as like your rush, like your speed ends on one side. And then you'll have your more your anchor defensive end on the other side. And if the rush defensive end, as they sometimes do, get a lot of attention put on them, like say Joey Bosa, for example. Joey Bosa did not lead the team in sacks his last year at Ohio State. Do you know who did, Kyle? I do not remember. Tyquan Lewis Gangland with the Gangland with the uh with the correct answer there. What Joey Bosa de uh, demanded so much attention from the rush end side that it left Tyquan Lewis from on the anchor defensive end side to get a lot of work done. And I think that's kind of why I'm leaning JTT as far as that answer goes. When a, so much of that attention's put on to that one side, he gets a lot of work done for the Colts. Yeah. Now, now you're making Austin yeah. very happy with, <laughs> with that answer. Gangland. Uh, let's see, Jared, number of quarterbacks on this roster that scored touchdown for the season. I'll say hmm. two. Well, it's like over under two and a half, right? Because it is Stroud's yes. gonna get a touchdown, <laughs> McCord's gonna get a touchdown. These guys will get touchdowns at some point this season. Um, so the question is, is like the Arkansas State or the Toledo game such a blowout that we actually see Brown get a touchdown? Yeah, exactly, Austin. It's it's pretty much an over under two and a half. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's it, a two and a half. It, yeah. Stroud doesn't start for Toledo. That we got a Heisman campaign you're, to win, buddy. You're, you're, of course he starts you're, for Toledo. You're you're really appealing to Stewart right now, Gangland. Oh. <laughs> and some other and some other people who we quasi know. Um, and then the last question I have here: uh, 199 and a half yards passing for a backup quarterback in any game. 199 passing yards. Yes. So under 200 yards or over, over 200 yards. Mm. I'll go under like that's, I don't remember a backup quarterback that threw a lot, a yardage. I'm going to go under, uh, but yeah. I think, he'll, but, I, but I think again, one of those September cupcake games, McCord could in theory break that. He mm -hmm. could, he absolutely could. Um, it's just a, it's a big number 
for a backup quarterback to achieve with the backup offense in at most a half of football, it's a lot, especially because they'll probably go in there and run it a lot um, just to kill the clock. Um, It's a big number. He's capable of it. It's possible, but I'm not putting money on it. I'm going under. Yep. Yep. All right. uh, Any other questions here from our, or sloop cats in the um um kabuto had one way up the way up the line here i'll find it um i'll find it uh did the internet cause the recent offensive innovation in college football more simple sharing of ideas etc um yes but i don't think the I don't think the in of I think it goes a tad deeper. I think you're there. I think you need to go a tad bit deeper. What the internet caused was offensive innovation at the high school level. So what started happening is again, like you said, with all the easy access of information and whatnot, we started seeing quarterbacks coming out of high school with polish that you would see quarterbacks, not good quarterbacks, but you would see quarterbacks not uh, leaving college less polished than you see kids coming out of high school. Now between the sophistication of the offenses, um, the teaching techniques and whatnot that are available on the internet. um, I think it, I think yes, but I think it goes a tad, I think it goes just like one one step deeper in that high school offenses are more sophisticated and therefore you're getting a higher caliber quarterback out of high school now than you did like pre Andrew Luck. Coach clinics were still a thing. Absolutely. Um, Mm -hmm. It certainly helped. Absolutely. Um, yeah, um, I, I, so yes, but also no, um, or mostly yes. And by the way, strength and conditioning, we also need to talk about strength and conditioning. Uh, I think that your average high school strength and conditioning program is light years more sophisticated there's so much like BS gym pseudoscience that existed like when I was in high school. And a lot of that stuff is easily debunked now. Mm -hmm. And I I think that the, it's just, it's just, it's just information. Like it's, it's much easier as, as Kabuto said, it's much easier to get, that information processed and distributed. Um, so I think also from a high school standpoint, I think, but, but to my, to my point that I'm attempting to make here is that yes, but high school, there's a higher caliber athlete coming out of high school. And I mean, both physically and mentally a higher caliber athlete coming out of high school now than like pre not not necessarily like pre-internet but like pre um abundant internet you know um ubiquitous yeah. internet pre ubiquitous internet mm-hmm. uh, austin here says i want to know how many receivers will get a touchdown and at least 100 yards on this season Sorry, say say it one more time for me. I want to know how many receivers will get a touchdown and at least 100 yards on this season. Uh, a lot. Okay. <laughs> um, a lot. All right. Hold on. Um, I need I need a roster. <laughs> Let's see here. Fleming, yes. JSN, yes. Buka, yes. Harrison, yes. Ballard, yes. Uh, 
so that's five right there. Um, Cameron Bob, if he's healthy, yes. But you can't say if he's healthy. I'm going to say yes then. Yes. So then that leaves your so that that's all your non freshmen. That's your six receivers there. Now Brown, Burton, Gray's, and and um, Antwi. Any of those guys? Do you think, Jared? Um, I would say part, let's say a, a problem here is that we're currently at six and that the number is seven and a half. So we would need two more in order to win the bet. Um, I All would right. be more apt to take the bet if it were six and a half. Cause I think you, so you named the guys so, who are absolute yep. 100% locks. Um, and we so were talking so, specifically about wide receivers, yeah. correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. They're tight ends. So last year, Jared, Ohio State had six, had six receivers. JSN, Wilson, Olave. Oh, nope. I'm sorry. It's less than six. JSN, Wilson, Olave. And um, Harvin Harrison Jr. Just those four. A hundred yards and a touchdown on the season? Mm -hmm. Abuka had almost 200 yards, but did not get a touchdown last year. And yeah, I think so you do expect more wide receiver rotation this year. Um, but yeah, it, if it were six and a half, I would be more apt. Um, but I'm going to go, I'm going to go, I'm going to go. I'll stick with Austin six. said with over six. under at seven and a half. I'm going under. Yeah. I'll go. Oh I'll, I'll, yeah. I'm thinking six. I'm thinking six. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking seven even, but still that's under seven and a half. Yep. 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 Yeah. I agreed, Austin. There's going to be a lot more rotation this year with Wilson and a lot of Agon. Absolutely. There's going to, because last year it was basically the three wide receivers. Mm -hmm. For the yeah. most part, it was just the three wide receivers. Um, yeah. Uh, and it, what Marvin Harrison didn't even eclipse that number until two of those wide receivers weren't on the field, right? He didn't eclipse those statistics until the Rose Bowl. Um, and by the way, we're assuming there's going to be more rotation this year. We've not seen that under Heartline. We've not seen that sort of wide receiver rotation under Heartline. Now, that doesn't mean he won't do it. That just means that he had Alave and Wilson on his roster. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. So now that you don't have these two top 10-ish picks on the team, and maybe you just have the one guaranteed top 10 pick on the team, that I don't know. Yeah. No, you saw it under the previous guy who didn't develop them as well. Well, the previous guy did such a deep wide receiver rotation because he was more he's more concerned about being friends with the wide receivers than he was about turning them into good wide receivers. He wanted to be the yeah. cool dad. He's the cool dad. Mm -hmm. There's no there's no discipline. There's no making tough decisions. He wanted to be like, he was a cool dad. Yep. All right, Jared, that's all the questions we have. That is, that is it. All right. Uh, do you have anything in Kyle's corner or did you use them all up on Monday? I used them all up. Hey, the crew one, <laughs> the crew finally got their only goals for the month of, for the month of April in the last day of April. You know, you got, you got, you got to hit the, you got to hit the quota before the end of the month. Yes, just like just like speeding tickets. Uh. <laughs> I was thinking it. I didn't say it, but I was thinking it. <laughs> All right, that's it. Can I get a happy birthday, guys? Is it your birthday, Austin? Well, happy birthday then, Austin. I mean, it was my. I. I oh, it, it will, will be, be on... when the episode releases. Well, then, happy birthday. I yes. mean, no one said happy birthday to me on, on I, my birthday, but you know, it's fine. I get Jared. I know. I'm just fucking with you. 
You have it in the jam. Okay. <laughs> wow. I know. I know, Austin. I know. All right. Uh, nothing in Kyle's corner except the the. Uh, no, there's the crew stuff. There's the crew stuff. So tonight's ending. Uh, uh, everyone, come join the Discord. Um, you you see how much fun we have with Austin and Gangland and Odin and and a bunch of the other guys over in the Discord server. Don't forget about Suncard and Zach and a lot of the other guys. Uh, we have so much fun with these guys. Um, so come join us. Um, just fine with me playing the Vapors. Okay, I'll do that. Uh, happy birthday. Here's the song you requested. <laughs> this is your birthday present, though, Austin. Uh, so, yeah, uh, that's it. That's the end of the show. Join the Discord. Join the Patreon. Follow us on YouTube if you're not already following us on YouTube. If you're just uh, doing the audio version of this, you can, you can also watch us over on YouTube. Uh, YouTube.thesloopcast.com So... Uh, tonight's ending music. It's better than what I got you last year. That, that that's a fact. That is an absolute fact. Um, the <laughs> yeah, tonight's ending music is playing to vapors. Uh, the band playing to vapors. The song just fine with me. Uh, so you can uh, stick around and listen to that on the audio version, or if you're watching us on YouTube, uh, we can't do music on YouTube, but you can click the link down below, and the link down below uh, in the show notes uh, will take you to the song. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcast. You know, I'm going I'm to do that again. That was a mess, and I'm going to do it again. Now I'm going to do it again. Like, Jared, you're going to edit the other I'm not going to edit the other one out. I'm just going to do it again. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Playing to Vapors doing just fine with me.